short one sentence. The first and second law of thermodynamics govern every system in the universe, including social systems. So that's what we're talking about here. So the, how that translates is energy is conserved. Entropy, instead of talking about entropy as in saying well as disorder, the original name for entropy was transformation constant. Every time the day is seated, you've got a car, you've got a cardinal system heating. So you get when the sun when the sun shines, the earth turns towards the sun, the sun shines on it, you get a social expansion. So that's entropy increase. Then when it comes down, this is this is contact with the hot body of the carnal engine. When you go back here, you've got decrease in entropy, contraction volume. And it's put in contact with the cold body, the dark night sky. So the change in between that one cycle. Between going so the social system going up to its maximum volume, with the example of which is when it's warm in summertime, everybody's out partying, having a good time. When it's zero degrees, ten o'clock at night, everybody's in their homes contracting. This, this is what's called Thor Hicks. <coughs> and the entropy, instead of the change in entropy, is the original name for it is called transformation content, which means that the system is not in its original structure, and the difference in configuration is the entropy increase. So. So this is called the ball and ring experiment. Light and diversity is all these heat experiments. This is what's called forward heat talk. If you heat a body, it will, it will increase in volume. So we heat for 30 seconds. It doesn't go through the ring. Then we have entropy increase in the metal. Now, just like the, the surface of the, the thing going on here, society expands in volume just like this. And you can, and you can quantify this. Now, if I cool it, just like a Carnot engine being put in contact with cool water, we have volume contraction and the ring goes through. So, and you have entropy change in this process. Now, when you instead of thinking about entropy as the messy room, you want to, what you want to understand the difference in entropy increase is called transformation content. And it's based on what's called the Euler reciprocity relationship, which you can look online. And I go back to uh, Leonard Euler's most prolific mathematician. And that's where you want to get your own understanding systems. Yes, yes, you can okay. measure love in to be physically, SI units. To be a physically yes, real you, model. You can measure love in SI units. Okay, why don't you say something about how you understand Goethe? Goethe talked about how you can measure uh, the, the love in terms of the affinities and how that got changed over into Gibbs free energies. Like in the, uh, um, do you want to talk about that, like 30 seconds? Uh, yes, yes, I can. So you said that uh, your your point was that love can be measured in SI units. Yes. Okay. Can you explain to uh, everybody how that how that went from Goethe into phys physical chemistry? Well, and now talk about how tell us us Americans how we went from Empedocles to Goethe to some of your work where you cite Empedocles and your Goethe. And then you go into your okay. thermodynamic form form formulations. Okay. Um, when I started my work as the head of the department, I had to do a paper, do something, and, and tell in our discussion what I was going to do. So I looked at my model. I found that societies like the war in Bosnia, and my uh, my met my metals my. Um, alloy, my uh, brass, at the same surface as the map of, of uh, I have this picture here, mm -hmm. um, I thought there must be some uh, close relationship, so I used the equations of actually uh, of chemistry or physics to apply this to, to metals or to alloys as well as to, um, to, to binary uh, social systems like Catholic, Protestants, black, white, and foreigners, and people, or Bosnians and uh, Muslims. And the phase diagrams were the same. So uh, I said, well, this is funny that it works so well. But then I realized somebody else had done that 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. That was in Pedocles. And he did the same thing already, because first many object and say you can't have chemistry and explain uh, social systems by chemistry. And then I said, wait a minute, Empedocles from Abigento, uh, he was, um, I don't have the dates now exactly in my mind, 14, uh, yeah, 40, 50 BC, uh, 
he said, uh, he said, uh, people that are friends mix like water and wine, mm -hmm. and enemies separate like water and oil. Mm -hmm. So he was the first one to uh, explain social interactions by chemical interactions mm -hmm. between water and oil and water and alcohol. So this is actually the first one who started this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this theory was long forgotten, and Goethe found this by chance by his studies, and he's, he thought this is a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. He was actually trying to understand chemistry, and he thought he knows quite well uh, about social systems because he had much experience with social people. And he said, some people they the book at home. I'll zoom in on you. He said, "Well, I know very well how people react, and now I can map this to chemistry." Uh -huh. And then he said, "Okay, uh, I will uh, write a chemical novel where two agents or two couples meet." like two agents in chemistry meet, like hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Yeah. And they meet, and at the moment where they meet, they start separating, mm -hmm. and each one takes one of the other and forming sodium chloride and forming uh, water, uh, H2O. Okay. And uh, in this way, he said people also react in the same way. They also have these affinities, and there must be also an attraction between different people, not only between men and women, but there must be for special people, there must be a special attraction, higher attraction, like in chemistry. So he applied uh, the idea of Empedocles that uh, people, uh, that the behavior of people can be explained by chemistry. Uh, in his novel, Die uh, Wahlverwandtschaften. And so very many people uh, love this idea very much. How do you say it in German? Die Wahlverwandtschaften. Die Wahlverwandtschaften. Verwandtschaft is relationship. Yeah, yeah. Wahl means to choose mm -hmm. or election. So, how you, so Goethe believed that that model scales up to social interactions, and you believe the same thing. Yes, and I think we can really apply these laws to people. Does man react with woman like hydrogen reacts with oxygen? Ludwig Butcher is he, he's one of the, he's ranked as an extreme atheist. And he's one of the, he wrote uh, Force of Matter in 1855. He says man reacts with woman just as hydrogen reacts with oxygen. <laughs> this is the modern. Let's zoom around there. Zoom in, zoom out, and then turn around like this. Let's oh, yeah. talk to so this. Yeah, yeah. Let's start out with me in the fire. At 1.30 a.m., before asking the butcher a question, I had everyone do a tequila toast around the fire to help loosen the lips of conversation. The reason being to cite an example of this seemingly innocuous Question. Butchner was fired from his job as a physics professor in Germany for expounding on these views in the form of the book Force and Matter or Principles of the Natural Order of the Universe with a System of Morality Based Thereon, which famously became known as the biggest atheist Bible of the 19th century. To cite one example, on page 25 he says, In gunpowder, unsatisfied chemical affinities lie side by side. Chemical affinities, if you don't know, are the microforces exchanged between people or between smaller atoms and molecules. He says, So soon as the ignited spark reaches it, the chemical differences are compensated, and heat, light, and mechanical energy are given forth. So the question is, is the heat that's given off when gunpowder ignites the same heat as when couples spark relationships on Tinder? Or is this comparison just a 
coincidental analogy with no substantial connection. Ooh, Laura. She's 21 years old, guys. Looking for a guy. Damn, boy. You must be my GPA because I know I can do better. I'm just too lazy to actually try. That's so true. That's me. Laura's relatable. I might just hit up Laura just because we kind of relate on grades. Real simple question. Does the heat that's going on over here when the wood burns with the oxygen, is that the same heat when man reacts to woman and gives off heat? Whether it's argument, friction, passion, or love. So there we saw everybody give out the quick knee-jerk answer, yes. But when you start digging into people, you'll see that the yes answer will conflict with some of humankind's most deeply ingrained beliefs. In short, to summarize, all of this is what's called prolegomenon, meaning that is is basic standard knowledge that one needs to absorb before they can go to the next step of understanding existence, which is to write a standard textbook on chemical thermodynamics, the way chemical thermodynamics textbooks are written, albeit with focus on humans and society, and no one's ever done that before. Frederick Rossini has came the closest, where at the end of his 1971 Priestly Medal Address, after writing a full textbook on chemical thermodynamics in 1950, after being trained by Gilbert Lewis, gave a lecture where at the end of it he gave a derivation called Chemical Thermodynamics in the Real World, where he said that freedom and security in social systems is measured by enthalpy and entropy differentials, and that we can use these principles to understand society better. There's been others more recently, but no one's ever moved to the next step in writing a full textbook with 700 equations of derivation the way Willard Gibbs wrote or founded chemical thermodynamics in 1876, which supposedly is the most difficult scientific treatise ever written. So that's where things stand presently. Catch you later.